Good evening and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. And I'm Tim Seaman. With a pandemic come many challenges. And for Sioux City Police, one of those challenges a rise in the number of arrests for operating while intoxicated, or OWI. KCAU 9 News reporter Lydia Vasquez joining us live in studio to tell us what police are doing to curb the problem. It's our top story at 6. That's right, Officer Andrew Dutler with the Sioux City Police Department says the department hasn't added extra patrols to enforce OWIs still. He says a number of OWI arrests is up. It's been 12 years since my first and I always say only OWI. Siouxlander Josh Jessen says since the start of the pandemic, he chooses to drink more at home. I always tell myself, hey, would I rather spend $1,000 and a night in jail or a $15 Uber ride? But that's not the case for everyone. In 2019, Sioux City Police recorded a total of 435 OWIs through December 9th. In the same period this year, that number is 508, 73 more arrests. It has been a year unlike any other, and so we're seeing a lot of different trends this year, and a lot of that has to do with the coronavirus, but it's really hard to put your finger on exactly why that would be, especially when it comes to driving while under the influence. As curfews were extended on Iowa bars and restaurants, Justin says some of his friends are heading elsewhere after 10 p.m. They've been definitely drinking a lot more out of the area. I mean, you go over to South Sioux um, at 11 o'clock. Um, their parking lots are full. North Sioux's the same way. Um, it's also a lot harder to get Ubers. Um, they only can give you a ride there. A lot more people are leaving the bars early, driving over there and either driving back or, you know, struggling to find Uber rides home. Officer Dutler says the department is trying to focus on public education about drinking responsibly, hoping people will stop and think before driving under the influence. Officer Dotler says the department has also seen an increase in the number of people calling to report illegal activities. He says that could also play a factor in the rise in OWI numbers. Lydia Vasquez, KCAU 9 News. Students in the Rock Valley Community School District were evacuated today because of what school officials call a student safety concern that happened early this afternoon. On Facebook, school superintendent Chad Jansen alerted parents that school had been evacuated and that students were in a secure location and safe. Then some three hours later, a Facebook message on the superintendent's Facebook page said that authorities had given the district the clear to dismiss students as normal. Students were to be picked up outside the school building as normal. Elementary kids releasing at 315 with the middle and high school to follow. The students were not allowed to enter the school building at that time. Further information is expected to be coming from city and school officials later tonight. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds is urging parents to lobby for a return to in-person learning at schools. The governor citing low infection rates among school-age children as well as those studies projecting students falling further off the learning curve in math and English. I think we need to do everything we can right now to get our kids back in the classroom, and I believe that the data supports that. I believe eventually we're going to potentially be doing more harm than we are by keeping them out of school, and I think the data every day continues to support that decision for a whole host of reasons. In Iowa, the age group with the highest infection rates are those aged 18 to 60, and the majority of Iowa's teaching population would fall into that group. Meanwhile, across the river, Nebraska has submitted orders for its first allocation of the Pfizer vaccine. Officials anticipate receiving it sometime next week. The vaccine will be going to eight hospitals who will be supporting an additional nine other hospital systems with their initial doses. We have asked the hospitals to prioritize within their systems to vac vaccinate those caring for COVID patients day in and day out. Some examples would be the emergency department, COVID care units, and local EMS. Now, for security reasons, officials are not disclosing which hospitals the vaccine will be shipped to. Audiologists today say that they're being flooded with calls from folks who say that they may not have the best hearing or not as good as they once thought they did. Masks are becoming a new necessity, of course, and the extra piece of cloth is blocking people from being able to lip read or hear clearly. Uh, recently, more people are discovering that their underlying hearing problems exist. A lot of people that are even questioning their hearing a little bit have found that the masks um, actually are making them come in now where they could get by with visual cues, but they can't with the masks. 
According to the American Academy of Audiology, it takes the average person seven years to get tested after first suspecting that they may have a hearing issue. Time to uh, check in with Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. That's right, and he's got to look at our forecast, which today included it almost was a, a, a record temperature. We had temperatures soaring into the 50s and 60s today. That's right, Tim and Sophie. We did have beautiful conditions out there once again today with high temperatures getting fairly close to the record. You can see that our high in Sioux City this afternoon was 57. The previous record, 63 from 1957 after a fairly warm low of 29 from this morning. High temperatures across the region, 50s and 60s observed. 65 in Albion, Nebraska, the hot spot there. Something to pay attention to tonight, the potential of seeing the Aurora Borealis. And we'll talk about that more. And a cool down coming our way too. That's all the 9 on 9 forecast in just a couple. Tim? All right, Scott, thanks. We'll get back to you. hy V will soon be offering rapid COVID-19 antigen testing at 47 locations. Uh, testing is set to be done through the pharmacy drive through at their businesses. People will receive those results in one to two hours, we're told. Uh, the cost does vary, and folks will need to pay with a credit or debit cards. Those tests will be offered here in Sioux City on December 14th. That's at the Hamilton Boulevard hy V location. Taking a look now at COVID-19 numbers right here in Siouxland. Woodbury County health officials reporting 65 new cases in the past 24 hours. The county now totals more than 11,100 cases. In Nebraska, Dakota County has 20 new positive tests today, and the county totals more than 33,000 cases. And in South Dakota, Lincoln County today reporting 47 new cases. That's out of more than 5,000 total cases. Just over 1,000 people there are considered active. The Siouxland District Board of Health holding their monthly meeting this afternoon in discussion, of course, topics ranging from the current COVID-19 situation to the upcoming vaccine rollout plan, along with their future budgets. Additionally, a new policy was introduced. It would reward salaried employees for all the extra work they've done in recent months with the increase in contact tracing. It was some way to be able to acknowledge and compensate them for the time that they're spending here for an organization which is allowing us to further protect the residents of Woodbury County. And then um, there will also be a form for you to complete. Mercy One Siouxland is welcoming a new addition to the team, a brand new helicopter and crew today receiving a blessing from the chaplain there. It was shot on the Mercy One helicopter pad in Siouxland Medical Center. Officials at Mercy One say that the new aircraft improves the ability to transport critically ill patients. It's both larger and faster than the previous models. Just really fortunate to have this thing. It starts up really fast. It shuts down just as fast. So it, it was totally made for what we're using it for. After the blessing, folks there on hand, uh, able to watch on Facebook Live as well. They're all able to take a look inside that brand new aircraft. And I'm guessing it cost a pretty penny. Yes, that's a nice piece of machinery there they'll be able to use. We are once again honoring remarkable women right here in Siouxland, and we're encouraging you to nominate a remarkable woman in your community. That way we can recognize their achievements and their accomplishments. They also have the chance to be named Next Star's Woman of the Year. Now, nominations can be made on our website. That, of course, is SiouxlandProud.com. Well, some say it is the most magical time of the year right now. And the magic of horse-drawn carriages can't be denied. Uh, one family is taking the reins on a bit of fun. We'll explain all that coming up. Some nice weather today to drive with the windows down, but it looks like a cool down is coming our way pretty soon with some slim snow chances. It's going to become more seasonal next week, more typical December weather. We'll have more information on that with the 9 on 9 forecast next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Erber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. Remarkable women are everywhere. They're leaders, teachers, mothers, and friends. During difficult times, they stand out to their communities and all those they help and inspire. We want to share their stories. Help us recognize and thank a remarkable woman here in Siouxland. Visit our website, SiouxlandProud.com, and click on the contest tab. There you'll find the nomination form. The deadline is December 20th, so visit SiouxlandProud.com today and tell us about the remarkable women in your life in Siouxland. Small businesses across the country have had to get creative, of course, because of COVID-19. Olivia Whitehead this evening showing us how one family has done just that in light of the holiday season. 
Well, it may not be Santa's sleigh, but the Pinkert family is trading reindeers for horses this holiday season. 33 years we've been doing the buggies. Um, we've always gone to Kingsgate and given rides there every year and with the pandemic that was canceled. And we tried to decide a way that we could still have a little holiday fun and still see some people and, and you know, do something for the community. It's a family affair. It's me and my girls, pretty much. So that's, that's what we do. And they're taking the reins on a new opportunity. I can run horses. Literally. <laughs> Live within a, like four miles of each other. So yeah. getting to do the horses together is just so much fun. And it's, I mean, it's just something we've all grown up loving. Generations working back to their roots. This is the best part, time of the year because I love doing the carriages. And sometimes I even get to drive the carriages. And giving other families a chance to do the same. We've really got to where we just hook the horses up. We ride all the time and do things. And, and so we kind of just thought if we could share that with other families this year, maybe it would make things a little better in a bad year. There's a big rivalry game at Briar Cliff coming up tonight. That's right, the Chargers and Mustangs squaring off this evening. Jake will be live from the cliff with a preview of that game right after the break.